Hey everybody, I bet you are wondering if you can actually make $42,000 uh, publishing low content books on Amazon through Kindle Direct Publishing. Well, I am here to prove to you that it is completely and totally possible. All right, everybody, I'm gonna also share my five tips with you on how I did this and how you can do this too. All right, everybody, my name is Ashley with Publish with Ashley, and I am here to tell you about uh, publishing books on Amazon, Etsy stores, that sort of thing. There's a lot of great things you can do in this whole digital world. Now, some of you may have not heard of Kindle Direct Publishing or publishing on Amazon, so let me give you a quick preview for those who have not heard. Amazon uh, offers the ability through Kindle Direct Publishing to publish a book on Amazon. Now, the fantastic thing, the thing I think is amazing about this sort of business is you just provide the digital files, so the cover and the interior to Amazon, and they create a product page. And then when a customer purchases it, then Amazon prints the book, ships the book to the customer. There's no dealing with customers, none of that, no printing books, no storing books in your garage. It is a really great business. But I bet you're wondering, can you really make money on it? And yes, you can make a lot of money. Um, now, let me show you. I'm going to prove to you that you can make $42,000. So let me add this to the stream. This is a screenshot from, I wanted to show you that you didn't have to have a ton of books. So I picked a selection of books. Uh, there's 42 in this selection. And I made, you can see, 41957 $41,957.96. Okay, I rounded up to 42 k but really that's pretty darn close. It was mostly because I <laughs> didn't want to print out the whole long number, but that's pretty much $42,000 in two years. And this is with 42 books, but really only four of those books actually made most of the money. I went and checked the breakout and it's pretty much four of those books. The rest, you know, a few hundred dollars here or there, but um, four, four of those books were the ones that actually made me the most money. And you can see these are kind of planner type books. So that's why they've got those huge spikes in them. Uh, they're, they're seasonal, right? So I'm going to have my run ups in November. And this is just one of like a selection of 42 books. It's not all of my books, but I wanted to show you kind of that um, you can make a lot if you just kind of focus down and really create something. Uh, so mine run up because they're planner type books. They will run up, you know, starting in October a little bit, and then you have November, December, January, February, and then it just kind of drops off, as you can see. You sell stuff throughout the year. Um, so, but most of my money is actually made in that Q4, early uh, Q1 timeframe. But you can see, you can actually make quite a lot of money um, with books. And like I said, this is just 42, but really four are making the money. Okay, I wanted to show you something else to show you that it's kind of, let's see, just numbers wise. Let me click that. So this is kind of uh, the historical, there's a historical view. You can see these are pretty much uh, the gray means that it's paperbacks. So these are paperbacks and it gives you kind of the more insight into that spike. This is units. So around the Christmas time frame, I'm selling, let's see, actually, yeah, that's Christmas. That's December right there. That spike is like 2000 units. Um, I do a pretty good profit on these. Uh, the ones that are selling money, the two of them are about $5 in profit. And uh, one of them is like 385, 383, something like that. Um, so I have a decent profit margin on these. Uh, but that's kind of what you can, you can do this. This is something you guys can definitely do. Um, so let me give you my five tips because I think me, people want to start this business, think it's easy. It is not easy to make this money, but it's not hard either. It's just, it takes work and insight and really trying to go about it in the correct way. It's not about throwing a bunch of stuff out there and then crossing your fingers and hoping. So my number one tip is research. And actually the second one's kind of the same. So the first one is do research and find a hungry yet small niche. Okay. You're not there's definitely money to be made in large niches, but I found the most success trying to find a very hungry niche that meaning there's lots of kind of not a lot of people out there, like, you know, like a million, which sounds like a lot. But in the entire world, that's not all that much, um, like a million people who are really interested in a certain subject and they really want to purchase something. They want something to help them grow or they want something to help them accomplish something. Uh, in this case, these planners are very, very specific. They are very in tune with a specific niche. It has specific questions. You know, it's very in tune with them. And so um, how do you do this? So how do you find these niches? You know, you can start on Amazon and find 
what's out there. Um, I, I usually say I want you want to start with something you know. This is actually what I stumbled upon. I found um, you know something I was passionate about, and then looked out there and saw there really wasn't that much out there in this weird kind of not weird, but just definitely it's a smaller niche. Um, target audience that there wasn't something out there that did what I wanted it to do. So I created a planner that that talks to this and that people are interested in, but there really wasn't much out there. And this is totally possible. It is not saturated because there's people with new interests, new trends, new things all the time. Okay. It's the world changes every single day. So don't think that everything's going to be saturated. Is it more difficult to find these niches? Yes. But that's why I suggest kind of starting with something, you know, so you have some framework. OK, the other thing, you know, go on Amazon, see what's out there, see what's missing, read comments of books, maybe similar or similar, but in a different niche. Um, you know, if you're looking at planners, look at planners in other niches and see, you know, what people are asking for. Maybe you'll find something through reading reviews and things like that. Now, my number two tip is going to kind of sound like my first tip, which is research <laughs> you need to do once you find your niche you need to research your niche and i don't mean just cursory like look and see what's on amazon no no you need to look at the websites look at fan sites google facebook groups you know join some groups don't you know advertise to them learn from those groups see what the trending topics are see what the trending phrases are find out the terminology find out those keywords that Unless you're really immersed in the niche, you wouldn't know because the people are, who are really immersed in it, who really want something are looking for specific like words <laughs> when they type into Amazon because they're familiar with it. So they're trying to find that thing. And if you can you know, hone in on those things, really do research and find out what they want, what they need, what terms they use and how to create a product for them, then you know, you're going to be able to succeed. Number three is take the time to make a quality product. My planners are not like day planners. They take me a month <laughs> to do. I am very meticulous. I have quotes. I have thoughts. I have, there's a whole lot I do with these. They take me a long time. I spend a lot of time on my cover and I do spend some money. It's not a lot of money. I think I probably for each of these money wise, it's maybe five, six dollars because I buy graphics, things like that. But I spend time. Okay. I really, really make it a beautiful product. Um, okay. So it's a really quality product. Um, number four, if you find a winner niche, start expanding your product lines. You can see I have these spikes. So one of the things you might be able to see, let's see, let me add this back. So you might be able to see it a little bit here, how I'm getting more towards the end here than I was last year. Um, what I actually did with that is I tried to grow my evergreen type things. So I know that I have products that sell, you know, in, in the end of the time or the end of the year, beginning of the year, but I wanted to kind of add some more evergreen products. So that's what I've been trying to brainstorm and come up with new products for my niche. Um, you know, things like word searches, things like maybe coloring books or, uh, you know, <laughs> think of what they might want. Activity books is something I added. I'm going to add this year for that kind of niche. Uh, something a little bit different. Uh, so really think of other things that maybe are a little bit more evergreen. I also added a product just recently that I'm hoping with the Christmas rush is going to push it and it'll sell all throughout the year next year. Uh, so that's that's what I'm hoping for. So once you kind of find a niche that works, try and figure out a way to add products to that audience group, things that they would be interested in um, that you can use those keywords and terminology and things that you already use to get your one set of books going. Hopefully that'll make sense. Number five, if you find a winner niche and you've expanded and do all that, do spend money on advertising. Okay. If you've proven it as a winner, right. And I'm not saying spend thousands of dollars on advertising, be smart and do Amazon ads, but do them specifically towards your niche, right? If you know the terminology, you know the specific words, thoughts, and ideas that they use, then you can use those in your advertising. You can do a manual ad on Amazon advertising, and then it's much cheaper. It is when you are targeting a smaller audience, it is going to be much cheaper for you to advertise on Amazon. Um, 
than it is <laughs> than if you have just this huge niche and you're trying to aim at everybody, right? That Amazon's going to charge you for that luxury of aiming at everybody. But if you have a targeted focus, you can literally do ads for 10 to 15 cents. Um, I have some of my ads are four cents. Okay. And it's because I have locked on a few targeted keyword phrases. They're like trending phrases that my audience is using, is liking. And it's because I pay attention. I follow that audience. I'm in Facebook groups. I'm in all the things to understand um, that sort of group and what they want, what they need and how they speak. All right. So those are my tips. I hope they were helpful for you and I'm going to answer questions. Okay. So with or without ads, yes, these are with ads, but I do want to say that, um, those big spikes, it is about, Oh, let's see. I think it ends up being with the whole 42,000. I don't, I don't have the exact number, but it's usually probably, I spent across 42,000, probably most $2,000. So 40,000 in profit. Um, because like I said, I'm very targeted. I am cheap and conservative in my ads, but I do believe in ads. I think they are a fantastic way to scale, but I don't believe in just throwing your money away like gambling. That's not if you are doing advertising like that, then you're going to probably lose more money than you're going to actually make. So targeted ads, be conservative, keep trying. Ads are a lot about trial and error and experimentation. Okay. Facebook user says, thank you for sharing great information. Oh, I'm glad it was inspirational to the, uh, someone else who said that. Um, congrats are most low content, mid or high. Mm, I would say probably on the mid it's so I had to check the low content box for KDP. Um, but I would say they're more mid in the sense that I have, you know, different quotes, different thoughts, um, different things on each page. Uh, the structure kind of remains the same for each page, but there are different thoughts and ideas on each page. If that sort of makes sense, different prompts. Um, it is definitely, you know, I have graphics inside. I have areas to color. I offer extras. So at the end of some of my even planners, I offer coloring pages um, so that they can color and doodle and things like that. I try and add extras to my books so that they seem very high quality to people. Um, let's see. The specific advice about keywords for ads is gold. Yes. I would say if you trending phrases are huge. If you can find those key trending phrases that your audience uses, and you're not going to find those unless you're immersed in the niche, which is why I say do it about something you know or something you like so you can spend time and enjoy the time you're researching. Rather, Now, if you just like researching, if you're one of those researching people and you don't care what you're researching, sure, you know, but spend the time to do it. Okay. Hippie Gold says, can you run through how you fill in the keyword boxes again? Oh boy, I have to get my little, <laughs> I have like a little rubric, but it kind of goes the seven keyword boxes. Um, the first two boxes are, uh, or I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter what order. I'm just going to give you what I have for the seven boxes. Uh, it's usually two boxes on what the thing is or describing the cover. So I'll use synonyms and, um, you know, if like planner, diary, things like that. So you use def different synonyms um, to fill out those two keyword boxes. And then sometimes I'll describe the cover as well. So, you know, if there's cats on it, cats, black and white cat, whatever is on the cover. So those are kind of the first two keyword. That's probably actually three keyword boxes. I'd have to like look at my sheet because I don't actually remember. That's why I wrote a sheet out. Um, and then I go for um, also here's a tip. I always do kind of a price point. Some people search for things like gifts under $10. Okay. So I actually have that as a keyword oftentimes, because if it's a gifty type item, gift under 10, gift under 20, gift under 15, whatever would fit. Uh, I wouldn't use all of those. I would kind of use the closest one. So if yours is $14.99, gift under 15, if it's under 10, gift under 10. So even if it's at $6 or something like that, I would still use gift under 10 because that's a common thing people search for, kind of 10, 15, and 20. Um, let's see whether it's, so I kind of describe, then I describe who it's for, um, you know, is it for your aunt, mother, daughters, brother, you know, who, who would actually use, you know, use it or want it, or who could you give it to? Um, let's see some of the other boxes. That's like four. <laughs> 
I, I'm, I'm sorry. That's all I've got at the moment as far as thinking off the top of my head. I have to look at my little sheet. That's why I make a sheet because I have so many things. But I can do definitely another keyword video about that. I haven't done one of those in a while. So let me write that down. Keyword video. I haven't done one in a while. I should redo that. So I will do that. Okay. Let's see. Thank you um, for the congratulations. What what group do you advise I join? So adv join Facebook groups for your topic. So if your topic is people who love super hard Sudoku books, I have no idea. I'm just I'm just saying a book. Look for Facebook groups that really enjoy challenging Sudoku books, right? And then you can find out what they like and what they don't like. Um, I saw somewhere someone was doing some really cool um, graphics and things for uh, Sudoku books, and they were showing how they added graphics to make it themed. Uh, so, you know, something like that. So anyway, join a group, Facebook groups that talk about your topic, talk about your niche. Uh, so if it's cats, you know, join a bunch of Facebook, if it's, it's fat cats, like, okay, Mancoons. Mancoons is a kind of a niche cat, right? It's a small, it's a big cat, but <laughs> it's a smaller niche in the cat realm, right? So join people who love Mancoons. I'm currently, I want to, uh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> uh, not a Scotty dog. What are they called? Anyway, a uh, schnauzer. I want a schnauzer. <laughs> it's a dog. And so I've been joining a bunch of Facebook groups on schnauzers so that I can find out about schnauzers because I want to get one. So, you know, whatever your group is, you join those sorts of groups so that you can find out information about them. Okay. Uh, let's see what else do I got. My book has a 40,000 BSR and an average, an average without ads. And I want to advertise. Yes. If your book is selling, I would advertise it now. Start slow and conservative. Don't, I know a lot of people say bid 25 cents and do an automatic ad. You can do that. I would not suggest it because I, I don't think it's the smartest way to do it. I would start with a really low bid ad, like about 10 to, 10 to 15 cents. As you get towards Christmas, you can watch my ads video, but as you get towards Christmas, ads just get more expensive. So um, my ads at Christmas time max out about 20 and I have one that runs at like 25, um, but it does do a really good return. So I'm okay with that. But I start really small. I start at 10 cents. And the thing is with the smaller bids, you have to be patient. It can take a week. It can take two weeks. Um, what I do, if it's not running after two weeks on these really small 10 cent, 15 cent ads, and it just doesn't take off, I will stop it, copy it and create another one. Okay. So you can do that. And sometimes it takes like, I've had, uh, I talked to someone and they said it took the third try before their really small ad took off. So you've got to be patient and you've got to be willing to kind of just just wait for the right opportunity because ads are a little tricky if you want to do lower bits. Okay, let's see. Many accounts was closed this week. Do you know why? I do know that um, a few people got closed because I saw <laughs> I saw a few people putting books that honestly, yeah, Amazon's not going to like that sort of thing. The titles were really, I don't want to say misleading, but they were more, I want to call it clickbait. If, if you, you kind of know what that advertising clickbait is that you have want to click on it because, because it says something fantastical, right? Um, that's kind of what I saw accounts being closed for this week. They were kind of using what I want to call clickbait titles. Now, I don't know if that's everybody, but that's just kind of some of the things I saw. Um, KDP with me says, thank you for your time. Oh, I'm so glad you appreciate it. And Hippie Gold says, thank you. Let me see if there's any other questions. Do you guys have any more questions? I really wanted to show you guys that you can make a lot of money um, from not a ton of books. I, I Definitely a ton of books works. It's just, it, it's what strategy do you want, right? Do you want to spend time and create something that you can, the nice thing about if you're focused and you're niche oriented, that you can advertise it and you can really laser focus your advertisements so they don't cost a lot. Uh, that's kind of what my focus and strategy is. And now what I'm doing is I'm creating my annual type planners, but I'm trying to add in more evergreen things. Um, you can see I'm having some success, but I'm really hoping this year, this next coming year, I added five new products to my product line. And I'm really hoping 
that those are going to um, like activity books, things like that, that they're going to um, get me kind of more of an evergreen type. Um, I'm definitely not my spike, <laughs> but um, some evergreens. Uh, I also have other niches. This isn't just all my income on KDP. This was just a specific kind of focused books I wanted to show you guys. Okay. How long did it take you to take off? I'm six months in. You know, I have kind of a sordid story. <laughs> I started in novels and I love writing, but it got to be, if, if you follow any of those like hundred, um, what is it? 20 books to hundred K things like that. Um, it's definitely, you can make money in novels, but I got to the point after I wrote, I think I've had 42 novels and I was really starting to spike, but I didn't want to write anything anymore. <laughs> Which made me really sad because I had a really good kind of income coming in, but I was done writing. And so then I kind of um, decided to really focus in. Low content wasn't a huge thing at that time, but it was something I knew I could do. And I kind of did it as something to, ch to change things out, right? Um, and I fell in love with it because I love the idea of finding people who need something, like have a problem they need solved and then solve it for them by creating a book, creating a log book, creating something that's really specific to them so that they can kind of walk themselves through a path um, and, you know, solve their problem in the end. And so um, it took me to find, you know, it took me about a year and don't don't feel discouraged by that because I kind of wandered <laughs> after being overwhelmed with the whole you know novel thing i wandered for a year in low content just playing with it but then once i kind of found my thing um you know i took off from there so i hope you don't be discouraged like it's my everyone's journey is their own journey and mine i admit kind of wandered <laughs> okay and that's okay because that's my journey your journey is going to be different but i don't be discouraged by other people's successes or other people, or don't be discouraged by other people's failures because it is your journey, your path, your business. Just find out what makes sense and what, you know, makes you happy and then also makes you some money. Okay. You just started Amazon KDP stuff recently and I wish myself success. Well, I wish you all the success in the world too. I hope that you are successful. Um, my channel, I am totally dedicated to your guys' success because I, not only do I love KDP because I think it's so fun, um, I, I I love helping people. I really do. And I, I really want you all to, you know, grow and expand and, and learn. And I want you to do KDP the right way, which avoid clickbaity stuff, avoid trademarks, create something new and that's your own. Um, and if you're going to do graphics, I would say avoid the free stuff unless it's um, downloaded from other like there's websites that sell stuff and they have freebies. Uh, but generally, you know, look and research and use the correct things, but pay a little bit for stuff only because then you know where it came from. Uh, the free stuff, some of it's good, some of it's not. Um, and if you're going to use public domain stuff, which I do, I use public domain stuff but I research it. I do the Google reverse searches. I make sure it's, you know, who it was uh, done by and what, you know, when they did it. And I make sure I'm all legal. So if you're going to use free stuff, you got to spend a little time, to make sure you're legal. If you're going to buy stuff, um, definitely change it up. Use lots of different things. I don't just use one flower and call it good. I, you know, create montages, I guess that's the word for, you know, multiple things. Um, so it's something completely different from the original. Uh, and it doesn't have to be, you know, like if you have six different flowers, you put, you know, all in a, an arrangement and then that's something very unique and different. And that's usually perfectly legal. Um, your transparency appreciate. Oh, thank you. Um, like I said, I love this business. I want you guys to succeed. I, there is room enough for all of us. Please don't feel that, you know, someone else's success means that you can't succeed there. I did a statistic once I read it. It was like, there's been over like 10 billion books published so far. Uh, and guess what? Books are still selling. So, you know, people published books long ago. People published books yesterday, but that has no bearing on your success in the future because the world is changing. People are changing. People like maybe what you have to offer that's unique um, to the world. So never fear that, that there's saturation in the market. Just be creative. Be uh, out there and just try new things. Uh, 
you know, re but do your research. Don't just throw stuff out there and, you know, cross your fingers and hope because I don't think that's, you can do it, but it's not the best, you know, method. All right. I don't make, you haven't made any sales on Amazon and this is the third month. So Miriam, I think. Um, okay. My suggestion is you're probably not niching down enough, which I always do it as a three tier. So let's say we take um, cats. Okay, so maybe, I don't know. If, okay, this is this is an example. Um, cats, um, maybe overweight, and then a cat breed. So I try and break things. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I did that wrong. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's go this way. Uh, three tiers. So cats, mancoon cats, right? That's a specific breed of cat. And then my third tier down would be a specific type of book you know, uh, word search, uh, coloring books. So you're going to focus in on like a three tiered down thing. You're not just going to say cats, word search. You're going to say cats, mancoon cats, word search. Um, so that's probably my guess of why you're probably not making sales. You're probably trying to be a little too broad and not creating something unique in the marketplace, something that people want. Um, and there's a smaller market for the smaller markets are much easier to be found organically in the search engine. And then if you're going to run ads, they're much cheaper to do ads. So that's kind of my suggestion, kind of niche down <laughs> or combine things. So uh, maybe it's Mancoon cats and I don't know what are the Mastiffs are those the biggest dogs. So Mancoons are like the biggest cat and Mastiffs are the biggest dogs. You could say the you know, giant book of massness and mancoon word searches, right? <laughs> I don't know. People who like big cats and big dogs. I don't know. You, you kind of got to think a little bit differently and create something um, a little bit different. Uh, okay. What types of ads do you run? Okay. So I run auto ads. I run all of them. <laughs> I run auto ads, manual ads, and the two within the manual. So that the manual, two manual or keyword and product. Um, my success, auto ads can work. Um, if I have an auto ad working, I just let it do its thing. Um, but I also do manual ads, which I have a huge success with, especially getting those lower like four cent bids. I have this one that literally it's four cents because I have honed in on these small, tiny little keywords. Now I don't get a huge, huge amount of traffic, uh, but I do get pretty good returns. So, you know, profit is good, right? Um, and the product ads, I like to advertise against other people's products, uh, who are either in my niche, similar to my niche or, um, in the same audience, uh, camping, for example. So say you make a camping logbook, you could on a product ad, you could put the most popular camping tent, the most popular camping, uh, gear, like flashlights, things like that. Uh, because people who would buy a camping tent or a sleeping bag or something might buy a camping log book, right? So um, I like to do product ads too. Okay, let's see. Oh, all right. Oh, gosh, there was a few ads where I was doing that. Okay. Do you ever take a book or series to look at? I'd love some advice if I'm on the right path. Oh, wait, do you ever take a book or a series to look at? I'd love some advice even the, sure. Do you want me to look at something? Um, yes, I can do that. <laughs> um, that would actually be a really, if someone wants to do that, tell me and I will make a whole video on it because I would love to actually do some reviews of things that I see either why I think they're, uh, doing well or something like that. But I want ones you guys are interested in, not just ones I'm interested in. So if you guys want to write in some series or books or things, uh, please do that. And I will write them down and then I will make sure to make a video on them. Cause I think that would be a really great thing for you guys to, to like see someone else thinking about a product, because I think, you know, just hearing someone else's thoughts helps you either gain your own thoughts or, or it's that group mentality. You know, you can find more answers, more ideas from a group rather than just your own brain. Um, let's see. Uh, if a lottery, oh, wow, it moved. Sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you for everyone who said thank you. I'll try low content in, even though I wrote ebooks. Um, you can write ebooks or low content. 
you've got to find your place, right? Like I said, I did novels and I just got burnt out with the writing process. So I went to low content as a fun thing in between. And I just kind of have stayed here because I love it. Um, so try, try things, try, see what you enjoy and you find kind of a niche for. Let's see. If a lottery ad is not working, would you switch it to manual? You know, the first thing I would do with a lottery ad is turn it off, read, like redo one, like make a new one and just start it again. Because here's the weird thing about Amazon's algorithm. Amazon algorithm keys in on how many um, people click on your ad and they show it to people, right? But you could get lucky in who they show it to. And if you they show it to someone who clicks on it immediately, it tells Amazon that it's a really good ad. Okay, so there's kind of some of that immediacy thing. And sometimes they, aren't just, they just aren't showing it to the right people. So you don't get any clicks. And that's kind of a luck of the draw thing. It, it's it's totally luck, like the right person looking at your right your ad at the right time. Um, so you just you stop it, just create a whole new one and start a new one and try that because that's what I would do first. Um, and then yeah, I would try man, I would try manual ad as well. Like you can run both at the same time, and and don't worry about that. Okay, wow, there's so many questions. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, definitely hippie gold. Send me some ideas. Um, and I would look at your books too, or if you want me to look like on like, or yeah, <laughs> send me ideas, whatever the, do you have any courses about niche research? I don't actually, that is a good idea for next year. Um, I'm trying to finish up my books before Christmas and then I'm going to redo my ads course and show you all. Cause I run most of my ads at Christmas. I run them all year, some all year round, but they're not that interesting to review, but my Christmas ads, I spend some time on. So I will definitely redo my course and add more info to that course. Um, but that's a good idea. Niche, 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 niche research. Sorry. Um, thank you, Miriam, um, for saying thank you. I guess that was a lot of thank yous. <laughs> so yes, any of you who are listening, please, please, if you want me to you research your books or someone else's books, um, and you want my thoughts on it, like what you could do better, what's good, what's bad, that sort of thing, even other people's books. Or, and you wanna say, hey, I, I saw this niche, why do you think it's selling well? I will be happy to like make some videos on that and share with you guys, because like I said, I think that would be really fascinating for a lot of people to just hear someone else's thoughts uh, on you know, a book series and why they're doing well or why aren't they or, or what they're doing, okay? So please make, just send a, either comment in my Facebook group or comment on this video of the book title or book series or whatever. Um, if it's yours, you don't even have to tell me it's yours. <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know, tell you my thoughts. Sorry if, well, if it's not selling, I guess maybe I'm trying to be as constructive as possible. I always try and be constructive as possible because there's always good and bad. There's probably good and bad in my books. I know there is. There's things I could do better because at a certain point in time, you're just done. And so I, I know, <laughs> I know when I've gotten to my limit of I'm done and I just, publish it, right? Because you don't want it to be perfect because if you're waiting for perfection, that's never going to happen. All right. Any other questions or thoughts? Um, yes, I go live. Yeah, I'm going live every daily. So I'm going live pretty much every week now. Uh, I had, yeah, a lot of things going on over the summer. And then I had a lot of stuff. Um, I had work stuff. So yeah, I wasn't able to do my lives, but I am here live. <laughs> I'd be happy you look some of mine online, Hippie Gold. Okay, is that like your pet, your Hippie Gold is the like author pen, pen name, right? Okay, I will write that down. Okay, um, what software do you use, use for low content books? Okay, software, um, mostly PowerPoint to make my books. I know that's, that's <laughs> I have Affinity Publisher, I know vaguely how to use affinity publisher, but I personally like PowerPoint because I'm very familiar with it and it does everything I need it to do. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's what I use to make my books. There's some other great stuff. If you um, like book bolts uh, and also um, why can I not think of its name? Oh, drat. I'll come up with in a second. Um, but book bolts really good. If you're kind of learning how to do stuff, tangent templates. There we go. I thought of the other one. Tangent templates is really good. 
Um, Book Bolt and Tana Shemplins, both of those are really good. If you're kind of new and just starting out, they'll give you kind of the right templates and stuff like that. But I've found that I do better and I can get stuff through KDP by really learning how they calculate margins and using their calculators. And so I kind of build everything from scratch because when I get certain errors, I know exactly what the error is. Like, okay, so the other day I got an error about something outside something. It was like outside a margin. And I knew exactly what the problem was. It was because it didn't like that I had bleed, but the the object was like scattered lines near the edges. I don't know how to describe this without showing it to you. Um, so I knew exactly what the problem was by this specific error so I could go in and fix it really quick. Uh, I was kind of worried it was gonna trigger off more pages than it did, but it only gave me errors on two pages. So I fixed those two pages and I was happy that the others it decided were good. <laughs> so PowerPoint is one of the things I use because I just really like creating everything from scratch. Um, let's see. Uh, look through mine online. Hibby Gold. Okay. That is, I will look on that. I will do that another day because this is, we're alive. And I don't have to watch you all make me find it. Um, uh, what software do you use? Yep. Did that. Um, what tips, what tips are what we are starting, please? Oh, okay. Just watch the video. The four tips were research and find a hungry small market, do the research into that niche and market, like really do the research. Three, take time to make quality books. Four is if you find a winner, expand and make a lot more evergreen or products that your hungry audience would like. And then five is once you have that audience and that winner <laughs> niche, advertise, do some advertising. If you've already proven it, it's a good time to start advertising, right? But be smart and conservative with your advertising. Don't just spend a lot of money and not understand what you're doing. Okay, that's it. <laughs> you guys, anyone else with any questions? Uh, I will, and Hippie Gold, yes, I will look at your stuff and I will we'll make a video. And we'll maybe live next week so you guys can ask questions. Is that okay? Do you want me to do it live next week? Let me know. Any other questions? All right. I think that's it. Uh, I don't see any more. Okay. Well, thank you guys for being here. I am so excited. If you're just starting your KDP journey, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I love to help people. I love to create videos for you all. I, I love this business. So I want you to love it too. Okay. Um, ads. Yeah, I know. I do have one on ads as I just did. So some ad tips. I know everyone loves ads. <laughs> so I'll do some more on different kinds of things. Oh, yes. I know you've earned only, yeah, 300 since the end of 2019. I just, I wish I could figure out why everyone's stuff isn't selling and why, I don't know, mine is or isn't. I don't know. I think you've just got to find your thing. And sometimes it takes a lot more time or thought or I'm not sure. Uh, you know, what the exact secret sauce is. I do know that really researching, really figuring out your audience, figuring out somebody who's hungry and needs something. Um, that's kind of the biggest secret I found. All right. I will see you all next week. And um, yeah. So thanks to everyone for being here and like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you all next week. Bye.